journaling because I don't like talking to other people so instead I talk to myself. I just read a page of my journal and I really wish I didn't. Ah no! <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Meg and thank you so much for being here. Today we have a fun, very highly requested video and I'm going to be talking about my journaling experience and my tips and my tricks for you guys. This is a pretty highly requested video and I can kind of understand why because I remember when I first got into journaling, although it was quite a long time ago, I had no idea where to start. It's intimidating looking at a blank page. So I started when I was about 15. This is my current collection and I'm about to chat with you guys all the lessons that I learned through that time. What are the do's, what are the don'ts of journaling? And yeah, why don't we get into it? <laughs> this is my deepest, darkest secrets, my joys, my fears, all in one pile. So I'm about to talk all about them today. First things first, let's give a quick rundown of my history with journaling. I have one journal in here that I think starts when I'm about 12. I'm actually gonna, oh, I'm actually gonna do, uh, It's a Winnie the Pooh journal. And I'm pretty sure it only has like four entries in it, but it makes me laugh every time. I really started getting into it when I was about 15 years old, right at the crisis of my mental health. Like just bam in the middle. I decided to start journaling and now I have all of these. I was given advice by a really good friend to start journaling and to keep a bit of a journal or to write about it and I did just that. And it was probably one of the best things ever. At the time, I needed it so badly. In fact, there's probably about three or four of these journals that I would genuinely be terrified to look at right now because, oh my goodness, they hold some heavy stuff in there. I haven't been doing it consistently. It's been very much a bit of a roller coaster. I get into journaling, then I kind of get out of it. But recently, more than ever, I've kept at it and I'm really enjoying it. So that's why I'm doing this video to show you guys how to really love it and how I made myself love it even more. I think journaling is so great for just getting those emotions out there. And it's usually one of the first things I do to pull myself out of a bit of an emotional rush. I grab my journal, write it out, and then get started with going for a shower or cleaning my room or whatever. My journal sits beside my bed and does not leave. That is where it stays. That is where I can reach it easiest. But yeah, let's get into the video. Let's get into my tips and tricks. Okay, so first things first. Your planner is not your journal. Your planner should be something that is for organizing, productivity, work, college, all of that good stuff. It can be where you write your to-do lists and your plans for the day. But I personally think that your journal should be like an emotional outlet. It shouldn't be something that's for work or productivity or anything like that. It should be a very calming environment when you use your journal. So this is my current journal. I leave this beside my bed with a pen beside it. I think this is really important. Make it really easy to grab. Grab your pen, grab your notebook without having to open a drawer or go the other side of your room. If you are having a crisis, you are going to want to be able to reach this straight away and just let out all of those emotions. So yeah, keep your planner and journal separate. My second piece of advice is find your journaling space and make it as cozy and comfortable as possible. For me, my favorite place to do it is in bed, in my bedroom in general. My bedroom is my happy place, my sanctuary, my safe haven as you can see. She's gorgeous. I like candles for myself all the time. I make my room very ambient. It's really important to kind of do this stuff in a comfy, happy place that brings you joy because you're writing out your emotions. It's a little bit vulnerable. I find it quite vulnerable sometimes just letting it all out and having that conversation with yourself. So it's just nice to be in an environment that you feel calm and you feel that is your environment and your comfy place. My bed is number one. Like I said, I keep this journal beside my bed. This is like my current go-to journal. I tend to use this in the morning if I wake up and I feel a little bit anxious or I just need to let out some emotions and some thoughts. I also do this in the evening when I'm about to head to bed just to maybe reflect on my day. Another place I love to journal is literally right here. This is one of my favorite places to journal. I love to sit on the floor. I don't know why, I just find the floor so comfortable sometimes, especially in times of crisis. Lying on the floor or sitting on the floor, 
I have a pillow here, it is super comfortable. And this is where I keep like my second current journal. You don't need to have two journals on the go, but I kind of just do because I am kind of, what's it called again? Mm, lazy. I'm literally lazy. Like I am here, my bed is right there. But if I'm sitting here, do I want to get back up from sitting down to go over there to get my journal? And vice versa, no. <laughs> literally no. So that's why I have two journals on the go. It's not as important to me as this one. This one I just kind of throw random thoughts in if I happen to be sitting down here. But yeah, make your space cozy, light some incense, light some candles, treat it as a bit of a ritual, just something to look forward to in a space that you feel happy, in a clean room, all of that good stuff. I tend to start my journals with writing the day up in the left hand corner. I write the date in the right hand corner and then I'll just say something like, hi. <laughs> I'll either say hi or hello or I will put like kind of a bit of a statement, almost like a chapter name, like a chapter title. So for example, last Monday I started my journal entry with, it is 8 a.m. and the sun is shining. So just a bit of a statement, just something to kind of get the ball rolling. And then I continued on by saying, I have a busy week ahead with college, but I will get through it and I will be kind to myself. I kind of just went on from there and talked about why I'm feeling so anxious about that week with college. I just make statements and then kind of just start talking. I love this form of journaling. I think it's really important to start journaling like this, where you kind of just let out your emotions, let out how you're feeling. And then if if you want to, you can move on to one of the other kinds of journaling, which is using prompts. Using prompts is something I've only recently gotten into. I kind of get my prompts from Pinterest. There's so many great ones on there. I have a Pinterest board full of them. I will link it below. I think prompts are really helpful to ask yourself questions as to what is it I want in this week? What did I not enjoy from last week that I don't want to bring into this week? Just asking yourself those questions to reflect on the week before. It's kind of nice. I really enjoy it. But but again, I've only started getting into that. I literally forget what part we're on, so I'm just gonna stop saying part whatever because I forget. But my other tip is make your own routine. I've seen so many journaling videos online and people saying that you need to be journaling every single day. And if you wanna journal every single day, that's totally fine. But if you're going from zero to 100, if you never journal and all of a sudden you're now expecting yourself to journal every single day, and then you beat yourself up on a day that you miss journaling, that is not what you need to be doing right now. Journaling shouldn't be something that's seen as a chore or this like major thing that you have to get done that day it should be a little bit more enjoyable than that i can understand wanting to make it a habit that is so important as well to keep up with it especially when you feel like you really need something like this in your life right now but for me i kind of just do this every other day every second day really at the moment or whenever i really need it is kind of when i'm doing it make your own routine if every day works for you or if every day, second day works for you or if three times a month works for you do it that way Listen to your own mind and what makes you happy. That is the most important part. Okay, so this is one of the fun categories. One of the most important things is your equipment. Obviously, the equipment is a journal. But I think it's really important to get a journal you like and something you love to write in and use. It's just important that you have something that you think is pretty and special. It's different to your other like college notebooks or your school notebooks or anything like that. It needs to be something that you find special and just enjoyable to write in. My personal favorite is I love an A5 journal. I think they're the best because A4 is too big. I find the page way too intimidating, a big blank page like that. So I think A5 is great because it fits in a handbag, it fits in a bag if you do want to take it anywhere with you. I personally would not really take my journal out. Maybe, mm, if that stuff goes missing and it has my literal name in it, I would run for my life. You can go even smaller than that if you want. With regards to brand, there's no particular brand that I have used that I've consistently used. I tend to find mine in like TK Maxx. I found this one when I was grocery shopping in Sainsbury's and I really love it. It's kind of just like how you feel about a journal. It sounds so stupid. It sounds so stupid, but yes, I am pretentious like that. I like the kind of paper. I like it to have the certain spacing that I like. I like the feel of it. I love to buy journals in person, which I know is really hard right now because of coronavirus. Buying it in person makes it all the different because then you get to feel. These are my favorite pens ever. 
I love these pens. I love this pack in particular. I use the extra small and the small for writing and then I'll use the F or the M for titles. I just love this little pack. It is my absolute savior. I think they write so well. They don't bleed through the pages and I can write really quickly with these, which I really enjoy. So yeah, get yourself some good pens, a good notebook, one or two notebooks. It's just very enjoyable to go spend some money on stationery. You cannot tell me otherwise. That's about everything. I feel like I just rambled, but honestly, the biggest thing I can tell you is to get started and you will find your rhythm with it. I promise you. It took me a while before I truly started to enjoy journaling. And now that I just do it with my own routine, in my own way, in a rhythm that I like, it's just working for me and I love it more than ever. So get started, find your rhythm, find your routine, and I promise you, you will start to really get into it. So I now have to go put these all back where they belong. I'm gonna go put them in a box and bury them out in the garden. I'm just kidding, but am I? Maybe that would make me like a historical figure if it got pulled up. But I think more so they'd pull it up and they'd be like, Gen Z really were messed up in the brain and I'd be the example of that when they find all my journals. So maybe I shouldn't bury them. But I am gonna go put them in a drawer and not look at them until I'm older and even more emotionally stable. So yeah, I'm just really glad that I kept journals. I think everybody should. I think it's so much fun. And don't put pressure on yourself. Enjoy it, love it, you'll get there. I am starving! And apparently I've got two packages downstairs, so. I'm gonna go now, but I hope you had a good time. I hope this gave you a little bit of help. I feel like it really didn't. Like, I feel like I said nothing of importance, but what do I know? What do I know? Anyway, I adore you all. I will see you all next Sunday. I hope you're all doing well. Please stick around if you're new. Love you all.